Hey up and uh, welcome back. So uh, just while we're stuck uh, in traffic, as we always are in the uh, middle of Otley at any old time, um, just decided that today what I'll do is I'll just run through every accessory I've put on this my Honda Crossdoor VFR 1200X, this fantastic bike. I've done a couple of reviews of the bike and uh, I've got a, one or two videos if you look back uh, showing you how bits and bats have been fitted but what I haven't done to press basically is go through all the accessories I've fitted, why I've fitted them and what advantages I think that they bring to this uh, already supremely competent and capable motorcycle. So I'll just see if we get through these lights on this particular phase, yeah, just. Okay then, so, in no particular order, well, sort of front to back, anti-clockwise-ish. First one, I've fitted uh, a headlight guard. The only headlight guard that I could find for this bike, because it's a, a quite um, distinctively shaped profile to the headlight, is uh, is by a mate called GP Golf Papa, and it's. Uh, I'll show you a photograph here. It's the um, cage type, and. Uh, it's not quite as straightforward as a fit as the uh, as the listing would have you believe. But any any road up, managed to get it fitted with the aid of a, a cable tie or two. Works fine, even with the adjustable screen. So, uh, headlight guard. Uh, reason for that? Well, all on the parts are horrendously expensive, and I'm sure that the headlight unit would be no exception. So hopefully uh, all but the tiniest of stones that might be thrown up uh, are going to be uh, caught by that headlight guard. So that's, that's number one. Uh, second, another guard. This from a company called RNG, which I'm sure you'll be familiar with. I've got quite a few RNG accessories on this bike. They always seem to be good quality. They're not cheap, but they seem to be good quality. And uh, a radiator guard's uh, always a wise investment. If you get a, a stone or a piece of shrapnel thrown up from the road and it punctures your radiator, that is a very, very expensive repair. And it's not going to be a repair, it's going to be a replacement of the radiator. And that's going to be hundreds, hundreds of pounds, hundreds of dollars, whatever your chosen currency, hundreds of euros. It's going to be expensive. So I've got the RNG stainless steel radiator guard. Now the other one is spotlights. I have two sets of spotlights on this, but the best ones are uh, uh, the round ones. These round ones at the front, these uh, LED round spotlights that, that mount quite straightforwardly to the engine bars. And these were about £50, which is a tenth, if not less, the price of the, uh, the Honda Spotlight. And uh, I'm of the view that you can't have too much visibility and you can't have too much seeing potential, so an additional set of Spotlights is a no-brainer to me. So yeah, Cree Spotlights. Yours for 50 quid, on the spotlights, including fitting, probably about 800. So that's over a thousand dollars, isn't it? Thousand euros. Not cheap. So, the other thing I've got at the front here, are the soft jivvy uh, crash bar backs. 
you can get crash bar bags for for lots of different adventure bikes these are listed as being a universal fit and they seem to fit okay to these Honda on the crash guards and uh, I think they're very useful for stuff that you don't want to take up um, you don't want taking up space in your luggage so if you're on a long tour particularly um, you know you really need your, your hard luggage um, for the stuff that's actually going to get get you through your overnight stays so what I've got in these two um, Jivy crash bar bags at the front is the left hand side one's got my full set of waterproofs in and the right hand side one's got me waterproof bike cover in so a couple of things there that certainly in the United Kingdom would be a fair bet that you're going to need if you're on a, a tour of any distance so let's have a look you'll see i've got my list here in my uh, in my phone holder uh, rng crash bobbins yeah if you look back a few videos you'll see uh, the video that i made uh, fitting these uh, rng crash bobbins i mean anything that's going to protect the bike um, in a drop and, and most bike drops aren't they at very low speed or zero speed where they just tip beyond that point of recovery uh, so anything that you can add to, to limit damage to the horrendously expensive engine uh, components engine castings and the, the plastic panelling and the panniers is a good move so RNG engine bobbins uh, they look good again they're not cheap I think they're about 80 pounds um, but they do the job but have a look at that video because they're fitting and wanting straightforward is what it should have been because they supplied the wrong size of bolt so um, other ones a bash plate I fitted a bash plate to this so there are some plastic mouldings plastic panels that fit around the bottom of the bike in standard form um, but they don't protect the underside of the bike from anything substantial that might be thrown up particularly if you do a little bit of uh, off-roading it might only be light off-roading on uh, you know gravel paths or whatever um, so to give that added protection I've just fitted a a bash plate and again if you look back I've posted a video showing how I fitted the bash plate to this bike and it needed a little bit of modification because this is the fully spec Highlander model and it comes with a factory fitted centre stand and that required me to modify the bash plate. Reasonably straightforward. So, um, where next? Huggers. Right, so there's two huggers on this bike on the rear wheel. Uh, on the leading edge there's a pyramid hugger um, which stops all the crud and detritus and all the other rubbish you get on the roads particularly when when the weather's bad particularly through winter protects the sort of um, the suspension end of business your, your shocker and uh, all of that area and uh, the other huggers on the trailing edge of the rear wheel and uh, again that's by uh, that company called GP uh, and I found that a very very solid fit indeed the bracket that fits it to the uh, to the swing arm is uh, something like six millimeter uh, thick metal I suspect it's aluminium um, but that's a, a right robust uh, bit of kit and again stops muck being thrown up um, potentially up onto the top box and round that, that extreme uh, trailing edge uh, so that's the uh, the two huggers now the exhaust and again uh, if you look back a few videos I've posted a video 
showing how I fitted the Scorpion Circuit Slip-On Exhaust for this bike and that's made a real difference the sound is absolutely awesome I'll just drop in a clip here from the the rear facing camera which is mounted on the offside pannier just above that exhaust and uh, you'll be able to hear um, just what a, a fantastic booming howling growling bass note it, uh, it, it gives to the bike uh, and that's that's not to be found on the OEM exhaust The other thing about the exhaust is um, you do get a handful of more brake horsepower from it and I did notice the change for sure but uh, for the most part it just sounds and feels awesome and riding a bike should be a, a visceral almost organic experience if not orgasmic experience and uh, that Scorpion exhaust adds to that so what else we got on the old list? There we go. The Hep Hepco and Becker. Get that right, German company. Hepco and Becker. Make quite a few things to Hepco and Becker. High quality German accessories. There's an area of vulnerability on the right hand side of a cross tour. It's a gap and there's like a couple of pipes and a, a few wires there. And that's quite exposed. Um, easy to catch with your feet, easy for your, any pillion to catch with their feet. Uh, you know, easy if anything's thrown up from the road. So Hepco and Becker make uh, a, uh, a really good quality heavy duty steel cover that, that plugs that gap exactly. Now I think that's a well worthwhile um, investment. Now the other thing, because I've uh, just been speaking about the vulnerability of uh, very expensive engine cases in the event of a, a drop. Um, I've got the R&G engine covers, right and left hand side. And uh, there again, uh, uh, very good quality ABS plastic covers that exactly match the uh, the profile of the engine castings on either side and to my mind they serve two purposes they keep a lot of muck and potentially corrosive elements in the in the atmosphere that much further away from the metal engine casings uh, and also they provide that protection in the event of a drop you know a pair of R and G engine cases well, hopefully if you drop your bike you're only going to drop it on one side and not the other so um, you can buy them separately individually so instead of forking out hundreds of pounds um, to replace Honda engine cases casings you're probably only going to be spending 50 or 60 quid replacing uh, the uh, RNG engine covers so either side RNG engine covers and again you look back at my videos I'll show you how they're fitted very, very straightforward indeed okay so what else well I like to have plenty of carrying capacity so I fitted the uh, Jivy Trekker Outback 
58 litre top box um, it's the um, it's the silver coloured version I've got, I've got exactly that box in its black form on my old BMW R1200 GS Adventure and it's just got endless capacity you can easily get two, face fel two full face helmets in there and a lot of other gear as well and it's just such a versatile uh, piece of kit and what I would recommend if you're going to fit that is that rather than buy the, the cheaper plastic universal mono key plate that you buy the on the cross store specific metal plate because it's a much better quality item and uh, makes for a much more secure uh, fix of the, uh, of the top box to the bike so that's a uh, uh, another great addition to the bike, I think, is that top box because it's twice the size, just about, of the uh, the Honda luggage. And speaking of luggage, of course, there's the uh, Jivy. Um, they're actually top box racks, but I bought two and put them on, bolted them to the. Uh, the Honda OEM panniers on here just as somewhere to be able uh, to, to to bungee things to that might be too long or too oddly shaped or too bulky to go in the panniers now you obviously got to be mindful if you're filtering and going through narrow gaps that you've got these but the whole setup's no, no wider than, than the fitting of the uh, if, if you were to fit the GV48 litre panniers like a lot of people do it's not as wide as that so you just have to be a little bit judicious when you're going through narrow gaps obviously and be aware of the fact that they are a tiny bit wider than the uh, the handlebar width uh, but handlebar width isn't always a good guy to get it rested bike through anyway is it because uh, you know particularly if you're filtering through traffic cars and vans and stuff like that they don't have dead straight perpendicular profiles do they you know they tend to curve in towards the roof so where your bars go through doesn't necessarily mean that's where your panniers are going to go through and that's before you factor in you know cars door mirrors and wing mirrors and such like so just something to be mindful of but I think a well worthwhile, worthwhile accessory uh, a little bit controversial, a lot of people said oh, you're going to have to be careful with that and oh, they're going to get ripped off from one thing and another well I've had them on a fair while now and I've done a quite a fair few miles with them on uh, touch wood, touch wood, not an issue, no issues at all right so apologies I'm just going to have to voice over from here because typically when I was about to go on to the last two items the battery on the GoPro, the helmet mounted GoPro uh, went flat but the uh, the fat face filming GoPro on the handlebar didn't so uh, I'll just mention by way of voiceover the last two items I was going to cover and uh, the first one was the famous now infamous Marcellus toolbox uh, which I repurposed as a snack box and one or two other things and if you look back there's a couple of uh, humorous attempts at explaining how you can repurpose uh, that toolbox for its uh, it's a simple matter of, uh, of bolting it with two bolts, uh, in my case to the uh, near side, the left hand side pannier. Yeah and the uh, last item to mention are the R&G boot guards, the self adhesive rubber boot guards that go on the plastic mouldings above the foot pegs. Those mouldings get very very easily scuffed by your boots so R&G make these self adhesive profiled rubber guards with a, a stippled finish that uh, do a very good job of protecting that plastic. Ok folks so that's it, thanks ever so much uh, for watching as always, I uh, hope that was of some use. Just uh, 16 accessories there that I think are of uh, particular value uh, to add to the Cross Tourer. And uh, I hope uh, that if you do invest in one or all of them, 
that the other videos on my channel that show you how they're fitted are of some value to you. So uh, that's it for now, thanks for watching and until the next time, ride safe and above all, be careful.